What is up everybody? This is Sven Diesel. We're going to be tying up the DT Special. This is a fly that I've never fished. I don't have any plans to go fish. I don't have a lot of experience with salt, but I have a friend going on a trip for some snook and he was told to bring some of these. And so here we are. I did a little research and we're going to tie some up. Uh, this is one of those captain flies. Uh, not quite sure on the origin from the research I've had, but we're going to be tying it on an SA280. This is a size one aught A-Rex hook. Make sure it's nice and secure in the vise. This is a shorter shank hook than what the uh, patterns I found online typically use. Uh, but we're going to be using a semper fly a six aught in a white. This is a classic wax thread and. This is not a very complicated fly at all, so we have plenty of thread even though it looked a little sparse. I'm going to go ahead and start my uh, thread right here at the hook point, working my way back down. I'm going to put about a quarter of an inch of thread and then advance it back up to the hook point, and then we'll trim out our tag end. Uh, this is a very, very, uh, I wouldn't call it easy, but it's a basic fly using minimal materials. Now we're going to be putting in a, a tail here, so I'm going to put down a little bit of super glue just to bond this thread to the hook shank. And also by the time I get my feathers prepped, it's going to be a little bit tacky that will assist in uh, marrying these feathers together. We're going to be using some Whiting Farms. This is an American Hackle uh, saddle from uh, them in white. A very, very uh, effective saddle. Uh, you can use it on all sorts of uh, flies and uh, particularly streamers. I'm going to pull off two from the center left and then uh, we'll pull off two from the center right here in a minute. Uh, these look pretty good to the length. It looks like typically this fly has about a two times the length of the uh, the overall hook length for the tail and we're going to leave these feathers uh, stacked against each other they're kind of curving towards the hook shank with that natural curve and we're going to tie them in on my side and just kind of firmly press it up against the side of the hook shank and do about three or four wraps trying not to let that thread twist it up and over and we're going to check that the length looks good and they're kind of, uh, don't worry about the tips not touching at this point, but you can see they're both curving over. I'm going to take the two feathers from the other side that I had already prepped. I'm going to match up the tips in length, and then we'll go ahead and tie that in on the opposing side with about three or four wraps working my way forward. And then we'll go backwards and check out to see that we like the length. The tips are aligned, so I'll pinch them on each side and go ahead and advance back a little bit over those fibers. And that will cause them to really stick up against each other. Um, they're curving into each other, and so they're going to support, I believe, the original DT, DT Special um, splayed the feathers. Um, but then now most of the patterns I've seen have actually had them going towards each other and so I'll put a little super glue on there just to bond that and make it a little bit more durable and we're going to apply a little bit of flash. Um, this is a uh, mirror flash from Semperfly. It's got a very uh, nice pearl to it and I'm going to take off about three or four strands. I've also seen this using a uh, lateral flash uh, but this is something I really like for a lot of my salt patterns that I've I've tied and sent out to some guys and they've given pretty good feedback. So I'm going to tie this in at the midway point and just kind of veil it over the top. Have that V go over on each side, but notice how the uh, flash is on the top of the hook shank. And then it's just going down on each side of the feathers for our tail. I'm going to go ahead and trim them a little bit shorter than the tips of the tail. And those will just fall right to the side and be nice and add a little bit of a hint of flash, a little bit of of, uh, translucency and that's uh, very 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 good for bait fish so next step is we're going to take another feather from that same area we were tying but this one I want just a little bit longer in length uh, we're going to add a hackle a collar here towards the rear uh, everything I've read says to do it sparse um, I'm going to throw that disclaimer out here again that I have not fished this pattern. Uh, I have only read how to tie it, and that's why we're doing this. Um, typically, when I get orders for these, it's really hard for me because I have to rely upon the experts and those that have fished it and, and have a good experience, and then uh, tie it and wait for hopefully some good feedback from uh, friends or, or people who have placed orders with me. And so we're going to be tying in the tip of that feather and we're going to orient it so the fibers are going backwards. 
And if you want, you can, you know, lick your fingers and crease those fibers back. But I found that once you get these uh, good, a good hackle fiber going and you have those fibers oriented correctly, each time you come up and over, you just kind of stroke them back and you're getting 90 eight ninety five percent of those fibers going in the right way you may trap a few but uh, we'll go ahead and brush those out after and this is a, a really good stem it can take the abuse of a brush and that, that I think is key for some of these salty critters that are going to be chomping on this and we're going to advance that up almost to the hook point and then as we get uh, <clears throat> a little bit past there we're just trying to do touching wraps as we work our way up I'll go ahead and tie off that stem with a wrap behind and in front do it one more time that way that uh, hackle stem is trapped I uh, will cut it out as flush as I can and then we will just double check that and wrap backwards over it to kind of uh, uh, force those uh, hackle fibers into somewhat of a cone shape and uh, I like to point out to have even distribution of those don't clump them all to the top as you tie back I just basically stroke them back and and begin tying with wraps over that the further you go back the further those hackle fibers are going to cone down um, I like to keep these a little bit bigger and the, as you strip that of course it's going to go down into the tail and, and look very uh, small bait fish like uh, I'm going to go ahead and put a little super glue on there just because I want to build up a little bit of a thread head uh, to help with the assisting of uh, putting our eyes on this uh, fly. And so we'll just go up and down this uh, little cone here we're making with our thread. Uh, if you're using a heavier denier thread, don't do as many wraps. It will build up naturally. If you're using like a, a 70 denier, uh, I wouldn't recommend that for uh, salt flies in particular, uh, but you're going to have to do a lot of wraps. So we'll go ahead and do a, a bunch of whip finishes here just to make sure it's nice and smooth. We're going to be putting a little bit of a UV resin on there, and that will help smooth it out even more. But the easy, the, the more smooth you get that without the ripples or bulges, the easier it is I found to put on the eyes. And so I like the way this looks. We're going to go ahead and, and grab these uh, four millimeter eyes uh, from uh, Spawn Flyfish. It's a uh, pretty good uh, black little rainbow pattern. It's kind of, I, you know, got that translucency, the rainbow color to match our tinsel. And I've, I've used these on a lot of uh, surf, uh, surf candies and had very good results. Uh, I believe this fly is uh, directly used for snook. And that's what uh, my buddy's going for. And so hopefully this will be a fish slayer for him. But we're going to go ahead and position these eyes and get them prepped so that they're on each side. And then we will, of course, have our UV resin handy. If you've got smaller fingers, it's easier. I like to use my bod, uh, bodkin to assist me in uh, positioning those eyes. We're going to use the Semperfly no Tack UV. I'm going to put a small drop right here in between the eyes on the top, just making sure that our eyes are still in the position we want them to be. And then I'll put a drop on the bottom. And what this is doing is basically positioning them, super gluing them in place with the resin. And I'll double check that the position's right. I'll go ahead and cure it up. And these are on there, but not 100%. Don't go knocking them really, really hard because basically we've created a slot with the UV resin between the eyes. And now I'm going to come back over and put a drop on the top and basically a drop on the bottom. As I work my way around, I'm squeezing it just ever so slightly, working that resin around the eyes and just kind of pushing those two drops as is. I've seen some of these uh, flies tied with really, really, really bulky heads, um, basically doubling to tripling where we're at right now. You can use epoxy. I'm just using this uh, UV resin. I've had really good luck with it, and it is also nice because it cures up really fast, 10 to 15 seconds. So I'm just working that around with the tip of my uh, UV uh, resin bottle applicator, and we're going to spin it around, making sure it's nice and even. I'll cure it up for the 10 to 15 seconds. And then, of course, before I uh, ship these out, I will be 
setting them in the sunlight for a little bit just to give them that extra cure. But for now, this is that uh, fly. This is a DT special, um, not super complicated, uh, practicing a bunch of different skills that you can apply to other flies. It looks super, super awesome. I love white. I love uh, bait fish patterns. And this seems to be like one that is going to be awesome. And from everything I've read about it, it seems to be something that is very effective for snook. I love looking down these and especially with the merry tail, how it looks and nice and flat. So good luck, tie some up and uh, white is the color to go to. Thanks for watching.